Don't you ever leave your comfort zone. Never. We're here to learn. We're here to learn fast. If you try to keep up, I'm not going to be holding your little baby hand the whole time. Oh, well, you are. You already know everything about art and all the tips and tricks on YouTube. Let, let, me, tell you, let me tell you something that you didn't know. Never heard of that one, have you? Comfort zone, don't leave your home. Come on, let's go get learned. Look, I've been working in the animation industry for five plus years now. Don't leave your comfort zone. All the professional artists, don't leave their comfort zone. Also, I'm gonna be going over some of your drawing challenges stuff at the end of the video. Stay away from my mommy. But I wanna be your stepdad, son. Look, there's so many reasons you wanna stay in your comfort zone, and I'm gonna be explaining the pros and the cons, and I'm gonna be going over examples of how it's helped other professionals kinda of get to where they are now. And it's actually an essential part of getting better. All right, here's the thing though, you gotta do it right. You gotta, you gotta do it right. You can get pretty dangerous if you do it wrong. It's so important because it helps you hone your craft, and this is what it's all gonna revolve around. Whenever you hone your craft, you're doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. And another thing that I see a lot in my audience is they don't have a lot of security in their lines and their, you know, their painting skills and all of that. So staying within your comfort zone, you're going to gain a sense of security. We'll get into this later, but when it comes down to line quality and painting quality, like the paint strokes and all this stuff, it comes down to your security level, or confidence level, you know. And so whenever you have the sense of security and the confidence, you're gonna be pumping this stuff out. You're going to be doing a lot of mileage. We can, which it can be dangerous, but we're gonna get into that in a minute. Confidence and drive. A lot of my students sit down and say, well, I don't really know like what I'm supposed to be doing right now. This is gonna give you that drive. If you're staying in your comfort zone, you're going to be driven to create the art that you wanna create, and you're gonna be excited to sit down and do it every single time. And that's what it comes down to, baby, is fun. You gotta have fun. That's the freaking key. Or else you're not gonna wanna, gonna wanna sit down and do this stuff every single day. Comfort zone is so important. Don't leave it. Never. <laughs> But what all this kind of comes down to is, is a result is it can come down and lead to style. You're going to find your flipping style whenever you do this. All right, I'm not talking about a comfort zone with little baby crayon. Baby crayon meaning if your comfort zone is just doodling the same, you're going over the same stuff over and over again all the time. You're not learning, you're not thinking, hello, then it's gonna, it, you're not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> oh, dangerous side. Look at this dangerous side. Oh, this is your nice little sparkly, cute comfort zone. It's so safe in here and you know what you want. What? What do you want? Oh, look at you. You're a little happy in your comfort zone. Don't leave it. What's gonna happen is it's just gonna get overwhelming and overcomplicated sometimes. And I wanna be clear that this is for beginners, okay? If you are years into your own art progression or whatever, we're, we're, this is a trick. We're gonna get into this later about the different, different zones of comfort. But right now in the beginning, don't overwhelm yourself with, oh man, I really don't want to, but I need to study hands. Oh, I gotta do the background design. Or I really wanna study storyboards, but it's not really that fun, and I got all the family and the friends and background design and style, and but it's, it, it's too much. It's too much stuff to be focusing on at one time. You need to have fun, you need to find a place of comfort, and you're gonna be popping those suckers off. Let me give you an example here. Again, I'm gonna be showing you how professionals keep this cycle, and they, they start blowing it up. They get, they go, again, there's a wrong way to do it, and there's a very specific right way to do it. This is how you do it. Zones, comfort zone one. Oh, that's right, there's different zones of comfort. You're starting to get it now, huh? Yep, you're, you're a little bit smarter than you look. You need to have something next to you. And I talk about reference all the time, so I'm not going to right now. Always have your reference of what you're trying to emulate multiple different references. This is how you navigate the comfort zones. Next step is gonna lead to focus. All of this is revolving around focus. Again, you're not going all over the place, going to grandma's house. You're focusing on the thing at hand. Big deal. All of this is leading to you getting better a lot faster. Next step is repetition and simplici simpli simplify, simplicity. Whenever you don't leave your comfort zone, you're gonna be pumping this stuff out over and over again, and that means you're gonna be noticing the same mistakes. If you're smart, again, that, that's kind of the key. And then you're going to be simplifying those mistakes into the simple answers. And this is gonna be leading to stuff like line confidence and speed. And finally, here's my absolute favorite part, is that everything that you learned in comfort zone one 
you're gonna eventually be moving into a separate comfort zone later and that's when it all clicks. Everything that you learned in comfort zone one, guess what? That is all gonna be going right into comfort zone two and you guessed it. After that, all of that stuff you learned from comfort zone two, that's gonna be moving into comfort zone three. It's just this endless cycle, baby. You know what, that's a little bit too abstract. I'm gonna be moving into examples so you can actually see this stuff in action. Sam does art. Best artist there actually is right now on the internet. Not. First of all, depth. Depth in painting. How to create depth in this eye, in the eye socket. Sam is learning this through repetition, through staying in his comfort zone. He's learning how to turn form. He's learning how to measure properly. He's learning how to simplify shape language. Look how simple these eyebrows are. Again, like I talked to him about in my TikTok video, we're talking about teeth right here. Are, do we see every single individual tooth? No, he's learning how to simplify uh, just basic things. The painting up here is a lot more loose. Uh, in the background, the background's even blown out. This is the focus. This is where it's going to be nice and crisp, right in the middle of the face. Let's go into why staying in his comfort zone has uh, helped him paint other things and, you know, create other type of uh, art. Already right here, I can guarantee you the amount that he put into staying in his comfort zone has led him to be able to draw other things so much easier and faster and get to the simple solution of what makes it work. All right, is this a 100% accurate dog eye? No, it's not, but he's taken what he's learned from his comfort zone and he knows how to apply it here. Another thing I can see right here is how to make this shape cute. He's gonna be using the same tactics that he makes uh, his female characters look cute. Now he can apply that same thing to, you know, animals or whatever. And on this one, in his comfort zone, he's painted so many faces and painted lighting scenarios that he can kind of understand how lighting works in any other type of object. That's the key here. He's painted one object so much and he understands it that it applies to everything. And I'm not even calling him a good artist. He's not even that good. I think he uses Photoshop or something. The program basically does all the painting for him anyway. <laughs> and right here, take a look at this. What do you think that is? You think that's a helmet? Do you think that's a helmet with the little highlights and all over this with the thing? No. <laughs> no, it's not a helmet. It's an eyeball. Look again. He understands how light can pass through kind of like glassy objects and highlights and yada yada. It's an eyeball at its core, okay? And this can be applied to so many other things. And I've always thought that this is what makes a really good artist is being able to take one thing and take a complete different thing and say, oh, you know what? These are connected. There's a lot of students' problems thinking that you can only use one thing as a one thing, like a, like a shovel. They think, oh, your shovel's just used for digging. Well, you, you know how you can use a shovel a lot of different ways. I'm not even gonna get into that. Right here, line confidence, line quality. Look at the, the grass, his strokes. He understands how to put these strokes down. He's done it before on a face. Reflections on the side of this thing with local colors and local values. He's done this with faces before. All right, come on, com comfort zone, don't leave your own. And the way that he's simplifying all of these strokes back here to say, this is what we need to be focusing on. This girl's where the painting isn't so loose. These are the two focal points. Everything else can be kind of messy. Comfort zone one, make sure you're having fun. Once you feel like you're through, Comfort zone two. <laughs> Moving on, let's go to the drawing challenge. Hi guys, we're gonna go, and girls, we're gonna go over your drawing challenge right now. <laughs> I had a drawing challenge where you pick your medium genre story and design, and then you combine all those to create an original piece. All right, let's take a look at what y'all did. JD Art did this really cool piece, looking pretty Gucci. Here's probably one of the most common problems I see in all the students' work, is that it's really hard to create these story shots and still have both of the characters very clearly showing their design. What I want everybody to start doing is looking at reference. Always look at reference. All right, here's a shot from Voltron I really like. This one can show the story moment happening while still showing both of the characters' faces. That's the problem. All right, what I'm gonna be using is this technique of how they set up the composition from Voltron is that we can see both of these characters faces I want to use that same type of setup right here This is also another common student mistake is that a lot of the chins stick out a little bit more than they need to And if you notice when we sit or stand sometimes we sit with our chins tucked more than we do the chins jutted So especially when there's shame involved so keep that in mind Another thing that students tend to do is create tangents and overlap things like these hands right here They're kind of creating this one shape. We don't want that. We need a separation of shapes All right, so basically Basically what I'm doing here is just making it a little bit more clear, a little bit more three quarters so we can see all of their faces, and the end result's gonna be looking a little something like this, just a little bit more clear. All right, like your concept, you got some good ideas, just make sure you reference. All right, moving on. Oh, this person chose Groundhog Day. That's a really cool idea for a story, mixing and matching genre, black mirror. Let's take a look. Wow, okay, you see, now you already have a lot of, a lot of painting skills. By this point, you can move out of your comfort zone, okay? <laughs> 
This always blows my mind whenever, and I'm doing this thing right now where I'm actually kind of hiring some people that are in my community. And it turns out there's a lot of you that are extremely skilled. There's a lot of people in my community that are just crazy good artists, and some of them haven't even had jobs yet. So I'm, I'm trying to change that in the future. I'm trying to connect people with jobs here, because this stuff is way too good. <laughs> okay, this is from Studio De Laurent. Stay away from my mommy, but I want to be your stepdad, son. <laughs> Round one. Wow. I was not expecting any of that. At all. First thing you want to do is find your reference. And I'm talking about Ryan Lang. Look at this shot right here. This is an iconic shot from Ryan Lang. And that's what you're going for is that iconicness. Alright, the first thing you want to notice here is the floor level. The floor level on these shots is very low. So we're going to drop that floor level. Look, I talk about a lot of this stuff in my online class. You can go check out the class in the description. But I'm going to be leaving a lot of that stuff out right here. I'm just going to be going over the basics. Drop that floor level. And here in the Ryan Lang drawing, other than the floor being low, we can see that the focal points are right here and right here. All right, and then a little background stuff is you got all these other characters sitting back here. The thing that I want to recognize is that they, the, the people in the back are framed by the other focal points. So let's go, let's try to do that. <laughs> all right, I'm dropping the floor level. And I'm going to be trying to keep, I can keep the same poses that your characters are doing. Keeping it rough, keeping it loose. I'm just trying to get the major poses down. The next thing I'm going to do is find the other focal point, which is this pretty lady in the background. But where can I put her exactly that's going to still, that's going to be kind of framed by these people? Because they're fighting over her, right? One guy versus the other. She's going to be kind of framed by them. So I think she's, she probably fits somewhere right about here. All right, and this depends what kind of camera lenses you use. Again, I'm not going over this stuff. I talk about it in my class. I'm not going to talk about it here. Camera lenses. And also, if we want to make it a little bit more dynamic, I'm going to add the ceiling kind of coming in. Everything's leading towards this. Really cool stuff that you're doing, though, because you're adding, like, layer movements and audio effects and stuff like that. So, I want to see more of that. That's pretty cool. Daniel Scun. This one's a horror romance about a young lover who saw their partner tragically pass away in front of them. So they relieve the situation every day by imagining they're still there. But when night comes, they pass once more in an infinite cycle. That's a pretty cool idea. I like it. Let's see what we can do. Nice. I like it whenever people start mixing uh, anime with uh, live action type of stuff. That's really cool. You always got to pay attention. In story, don't just look within the small little confines of your little world. Little baby world. Gotta look outside of it and look at all the other possibilities, like in live action. Alright, this one's cool. I get the idea, I get the concept. But the thing is that this doesn't look necessarily natural. Like, where, where is this character? You know, like, what's going on here? Let's try to make this make a little bit more sense. Let's, again, looking at reference, Fulikuli is very good at this. I think this is on a bridge or something. But the point is, this character is doing something here. It's not like out in the middle of the woods. It's, it's on a bridge, and also there's a prop that this character is leaning on. So whenever you're doing these, try to think about the environment. This person that you're drawing could have been on a bench in the woods or something. It could have been anything. Point is, try to make things look a little bit more natural. Imagine them doing something, and then add the story on top of that. I like this, though, because this character has a pose. Very sad. And if we already take your concept of the story, this could be that story. This right here could be a person with like a ghost leaning over him. Really cool stuff though, I like this idea. Keep it going. Dang, that's what I'm talking about. J. Gill Art is crushing it. Look, it's like a, almost like a full animation right here. This is awesome. Got the music, got the animation. This is the kind of stuff that I want to see from y'all. This has a whole world. This has a whole vibe to it. This is the power of animation. You can create your own ideas and create your own world and get this stuff across. I don't have anything to say about this except for the composition, really. And this is just a pointer that I wanted to tell you specifically, Jay Gill. My main concern is the floor layout within the composition. There are some auditoriums that are built like this where the door's way at the top. But if you want to create this more cinematically, let's see what other cinematographers have done. This is from Euphoria right here. There's a, there's a uh, auditorium right here. And we can see that there is a door back here. And this is where Rue sits. What I'm going to do is take the layout of this Instagram post, which is a standard square. Now I'm going to slap that right over here. That's the composition that I want because in your composition, the main character is all the way down here and this person's right here. We need to bring these two subject matters closer together because there's so much space be not being used right here and it's just it, it's just too much for the eye uh, compositionally. 
All right, let's take the cinematic format and add this other character right here. All right, now what I'm gonna do is zoom in, grab Rue, the foreground character, and I'm gonna give her a slight blur. And to help me focus on the framing, I'm just gonna make this black right here. And there we go, now we have a composition that really brings both of these characters together. Now we can focus on that the story's about them too. And what you can even do with this is take her layer, if, if you were gonna be moving layers in animation, make it a little bit simpler for yourself, is that you can do a slow pan from right to left to uncover that character sitting back there. That's what I would do if I was a director. I am a director, and that's what I would do if I was doing storyboards. That's how I would go about revealing this character that she likes back here. Or I would start like this, and then I would move her from left to right, and as she covers him and swipes through the screen, that's gonna be the transition into the next shot where it's an up close of him. That's how you do a transition from far shot to close up shot of him. Something wipes the screen slowly, and then we cut to the next shot. Boom, there you have it. Don't ever leave your comfort zone, ever. If you like me going over your work, send your stuff to the next drawing challenge in my previous video where we fight Jazza. I'm gonna be reviewing the rest of these in a different video, but as for that one, I wanna be seeing you doing video reference. I wanna be seeing you fighting each other, basically taking still shots of you fighting each other and drawing over those for, you know, as reference. Watch my last video to understand what I'm talking about. Honestly, I have the best time looking over your videos and the references that you do, cause it's freaking hilarious. And honestly, I feel like I enjoy interacting interacting with you more than I like doing just straight up tutorials. So let me know if you like this type of format where I kind of go over your stuff at the end of the video. Let me know what kind of stuff that you want me to start drawing over. You want me to start going over backgrounds more or just in general the type of stuff that I went over here? These are just in general type of notes, you know what I'm saying? Also, Ethan Becker 70 on Twitch. I'm going to be flipping reviewing your work. It's like a big portfolio review where I just sit down with y'all and maybe on the side I'm gonna be doing some animation and just doing my own thing, but it's gonna be chill. It's gonna be a chill Twitch, me just sitting down with y'all. Go dink a skink right now on my Twitch and uh, go check it out. I'm gonna be starting streaming real soon. I've got one last question for you. Have you ever felt like you were stupid? Have you ever felt like you just wanted to get learnt and a little bit turnt? Go check out Ahmed Alduri's class. He's the best, and he's my best friend. Ever. <laughs> well, very good. Check it out. <laughs> Don't you do it before you check out my class, though. <laughs>